Your Excellency, Lee Myung-bak, President of the Republic of Korea, distinguished members of the Korean delegation, the Philippine cabinet members present, Mr. Uh, Son Kyuk-sik, Chairman and CEO of, of the Korean Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Dr. Francis Chua, thank you for your very unusual introduction. Members of the Philippine and Korean Chambers of Commerce and Industry, honored guests, ladies and gentlemen, good noon. The alliance between the Philippines and Korea was forged over 60 years ago. As Ambassador Chua said, when more than 7,000 young soldiers composing the Philippine Expeditionary Force to Korea were dispatched to the Korean Peninsula to fight in defense of democracy. Despite the fact that we were contending with a serious communist insurrection of our own, Filipinos of that era saw it as a great honor for the Philippines to contribute in the attainment of freedom in a country a bit far off. One of those proud Filipinos was my father, Benigno Aquino Jr., who became the youngest war correspondent to cover the Korean War at the age of 17. What my father experienced in Korea imbibed in his youthful mind the very principles that guided him throughout his life the value of sacrifice, the importance of hard work, and the inner strength and faith one must possess in order to successfully safeguard the freedom of his fellow man. With 60 years of warm diplomatic ties behind us, the same ideals bolster the positive collaboration that exists between the Philippines and Korea, constantly expanding and deepening in a dynamic manner characterized by rapid and sustained growth in recent years. Today, our bilateral relations with Korea encompass diverse fields with ample opportunities for comprehensive cooperative ties in the areas of politics, culture, investment, trade, defense, education, and most importantly, people-to-people -people exchanges. As our nations further cement our ties based on the shared value of democracy, human rights, and free markets. The future holds much promise for both our countries. In 2010, Korea was the Philippines' fifth largest trading partner, with total trade reaching $6.8 billion, an increase of over 25% compared to the previous year. With foreign direct investments approved by investment promotion agencies valued at $691.3 million, Korea was also our country's third top investor in 2010, accounting for 16% of total IPA-approved foreign direct investments. These figures underscore the importance of seizing much greater investment opportunities for our countries in the years to come, engaging in expanded trade, both in volume, value, and variety of goods. As the quality of life in Korea continues to improve, the demand for services in the fields of education, travel, health services, and communications are also increasing. Korea imports around 70% of their agricultural products, product needs, opening up greater business prospects for Filipino exporters of agricultural products such as frozen vegetables, sauce preparations, confectionaries, fishery, and fresh fruits. Now with a stable economic environment, a credible government, a talented, hardworking workforce that is highly proficient in English, the Philippines has never been in such excellent position to offer boundless opportunities for Korean investments. The signing of the renewal of the Memorandum of Understanding between the Korean Chamber of Commerce and Industry and the Philippine Chamber of Commerce and Industry, which we will witness shortly, serves as an impetus that will push our nations much closer to a common future of sustainable progress and mutual economic stability. Indeed, the Philippines is now open for business, and I'm encouraging each and every one of you to be part of it. The growing number of Korean businesses in the Philippines that are thriving and showing strength in agriculture and fishery, in renewable energy, in shipbuilding, tourism, medium and small enterprises, garments and textiles, and PPP projects should easily clear any doubt or apprehension looming above anybody's head. Allow me to thank our loyal Korean investors such as Hanjin, Kepco, and Phoenix Semiconductor, who continue to place their best on the Philippines. The jobs you have provided for the Filipino people serve as a lifeline to many of my countrymen who have been hanging on the edge of poverty and has had a ripple effect on their families and their communities. Thank you 
for your continued belief in our workers and for your unwavering confidence in the Philippines. Rest assured, this trust and confidence will not be misplaced. In fact, we have been vigorous in instituting reforms to improve the overall business climate of the country. We are doing this by simplifying and making processes more open and predictable, ensuring that everything we do and how we do it is clear, honest, and transparent. Our administration has addressed in an upfront way the reasons why private interest in the past has been dampened, if not converted into cynicism. We are taking greater charge in exacting accountability of how public funds are spent. We have already reformed how the government spends its money, mainly by reducing opportunities for corruption. In the government budgeting processes, we have implemented a zero-based approach to ensure more efficient use of our resources. Budget items are reviewed piece by piece to determine the relevance, effectiveness, and vulnerability to leakages. We terminated programs that could not deliver and strengthened those that proved their importance and contributions to the welfare of our people. With the reforms that we are implementing to ensure good governance and prudent fiscal management, the Philippines is in a better position to guarantee that our projects ultimately redound to economic opportunities for our people. What we intend to do is simple, an, econ an economy where growth is powered by private enterprise, but for the benefit of the greatest number of our citizens. A nation where free enterprise is harnessed for growth in an environment that promotes transparency, equal competition, and accountable governance. We are well on our way to achieving this goal. And with Korea as our close ally, we will definitely realize our collective aspirations sooner than expected. And I must pay special note in the earlier roundtable discussions, a Korean firm by the name of Dilim, which uh, has a Tagalog sounding word that is uh, the equivalent of dark, is engaged in the power sector, which will bring light to our people and our country. May this be the heartbringer of a future together for our people. Thank you. Good day.